My name is Gerald Schroeder. I have, I have a, thank God, a strong science background from MIT, Master's Institute of Technology, Bachelor's, Master's, PhD, seven years in the physics staff, seen a whole range of atomic bombs detonated, moved to Israel, met my wife, Barbara Sofer, a great writer, and uh, then uh, teach Torah and science. So luckily, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have the two that come together. And one of the questions is a, that I'm asked as a scientist is how can a scientist really believe that there's something that we refer to usually as God? You know, is this metaphysical whatever acting in the world or producing the world? And the irony is the question's really a non-starter. Science has, in fact, discovered God. And you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, it looks like science has indeed discovered God. And how would that be? Well, if you take the trouble of going to the web and, and they're typing WMAP, the initials for, for a satellite, it's a diagram that shows the development of the universe from the creation over time. It's a timeline. Every word on that diagram comes from the NASA site. It is the condensed knowledge of the scientific community of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. Each of the lines, the vertical lines, is another billion years. Okay, you start from a burst of energy at the extreme left side of the diagram, and you end up at the far end with the oval. The oval sh is to indicate expansion in all directions. Of course, because it's a timeline, we can't show that on, on a single piece of paper. We see here, most amazingly, that on the extreme left edge, it shows a beginning to the universe. Now, go back less than 50 years. If I were teaching that at Tech, I might have, you, you know, a person could lose tenure saying that there was a creation of the universe. It sounds like it's Bible. Because less than 50 years ago, the overwhelming scientific opinion was the universe is eternal. There was never a beginning. The Bible is wrong from the very first sentence. And then we discovered, suddenly, Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, the Bell Labs in New Jersey, the northeast of the US, discovered the echo of the Big Bang, the energy left over, which George Gamow, 60 years ago, predicted that if there had been a universe created hot and small, it would have exploded, and the energy would get more and more dilute. And, the, and Penzias and Wilson, these Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, discover this energy that had been predicted overnight. The Bible got it right. There was a beginning to the universe. Now, the black in the diagram is nothing. It's not a vacuum. Vacuums are within that diagram, within that cone of expansion. Back vacuums are empty space, and space is something. The black of the paper around the diagram is nothing. It doesn't fit in our human brain, because humans think in a box, a box made of time, space, and matter slash energy. No human, as clever as they might be, as expansive as they might be, thinks out of that box. So when we say outside that diagram is nothing, we can use the words, but we can't conceive of nothing. It doesn't fit in the human brain. How are we going to have this idea, is there a God or not? Notice that the creation force isn't a three-letter word, G-O-D. If you look at the words carefully, it's a quantum fluctuations. That understanding was first brought down by Ed Tryon, brilliant human being, in the journal Nature, almost 40, 50 year, 40 years ago. The universe allows creation of something from nothing, provided you have the laws of nature, the quantum fluctuation. Tryon realized, and he published in the journal Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, that you can create something from absolute nothing, provided you've got the laws of nature, quantum physics and the laws of relativity, in other words, the laws of nature. So look what science has discovered. We can create the universe from absolute nothing, provided we have the, the, the forces of nature. Now, the laws of nature, the forces of nature aren't physical. They act on the physical. So if they create the universe, that means they predate the universe. So now we have a set of forces, we call them the laws of nature, that are not physical, that are able to act on the physical. They create the physical from absolute nothing. And they predate the universe, which means they predate our understanding of time. Put that together, and it sounds very familiar. If you haven't noticed it, that's the biblical definition of God. There's only one nuance that's le le left, left hanging. We can talk about it another time, perhaps. Is that which created the universe, those forces, active in the universe. But up to that point, science says, we you are correct. The, the definition of the biblical God is predates time, outside of time. God is not a physical being, is, is a force, and it creates the universe. 
you'll notice that the opening chapter of Genesis, the only name for God is Elohim, God as manifest in the universe. Science has indeed discovered the biblical God. Well, we just need one part left, crucial, that which created the universe is also active in the universe itself. The very fact that you're watching this now pretty much establishes that point. So, uh, so we vote really quick because I need sure. you to answer a question. Okay. But I want to really answer the question. Okay. What is the subject of Proverbs eight twenty two that you just quoted? What is the subject? Because the I, the I is the subject. So what is the I? What is it speaking about? Off the top of my head, I couldn't even tell you because I, I'm okay. not, I'm, I, I'm, I didn't go that deep into the verse. Okay. Um, this goes back to uh, what I opened up by saying. When we don't understand the language that a text was spoken in, right. how can we understand the intent of the speaker? Okay. So Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22 through 30 mm -hmm. is an esoteric explanation of the laws of the universe predating the existence of the universe itself. Something that is currently posited in modern science. When you get into the field of quantum physics, quantum physics tells you that before anything was brought forth, there was the laws of the universe. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22 through 30 is speaking about the Torah manifesting before anything was ever made, before anything was ever brought forth, before everything was, was shaped and molded. So when you look into the, uh, the text of Kemet and you pull out a quote with Atum and Osiris, where Osiris is being spoken of as pre-existing everything, the first thing that I would have to ask you from a point of fairness is why would you make such a comparison when the Torah is speaking about a scientific fact, whereas the Kemetic text is just talking about an individual who, according to the Kemetic thought, is believed to have been immortal and existing before individuals. Whereas Proverbs 2230 is relating a scientific truth, the idea that the laws of the universe predate the universe itself. May I respond to that? You, you absolutely okay, thank you very much. To that. Uh, Torah that is plagiarized from um, Kemetic literature, is that it, or from, did I get it right? What exactly? Did the Torah plagiarize from Kemet? From Kemet. Um, what did concepts, the Torah plagiarize? Concepts, uh, literature, uh, concepts and literature, um, constructs. Uh, can you give us some examples? Uh, can I give examples? Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, Got <laughs> I said, the bridge is over, the bridge is over. The bridge is over, the bridge is over.